some of these crypto assets right now is moving higher. But make sure you're not chasing green candles. So it's just the opposite of trying to catch a falling knife. Yes, the macro perspective does look like this. Yes, if you try zooming in, the market actually showed you this possibility. While we were at 30K, we had the start prices first, 28,400, then another drop. So while you look for the market, the market does show you like, okay, there's somewhere close to 30,000, but the volume kind of shows you like, uh, a lot of people are interested in this range. The market actually gave you some understanding. Now, while we focus on the price act, we actually need a slowdown before we actually take another leg higher, right? One of the reasons for that is while we were dropping, we had this thought process saying, mm, we may actually bounce and we did this D-leg before we actually dropped. Great. If that's true and what we are observing in the market right now gives us a certain thought process, one of that is, yes, the market will be volatile for sure. There is no doubt in that, but this us playing out. Let it be the short term move, the medium term move. All of these gets corrected, right? For XRP, we actually had this saying like, okay, we are going back up, fine, but we may actually come back down. Then right now, while we look at the chart, we understand that, yeah, we bounced back up. Then we got rejected. We came lower. After which we were again like, okay, look for this range. Now, where are we right now? That's a important thing to look for because while Bitcoin moves like that, Ether is showing this possibility. You have, you literally have the major resistance there, but what you have to follow is the market. And the macro side of the market does not really look good. We shared our thought process in last video saying, I think there is something happening in the market, right? The share market, is looking bad, especially for the banking stocks. While we looked at all these banking stocks, we got the understanding, okay, there is something really wrong. And this drama, which is happening right now, we have seen this over and over and over again, a lot of different times when we actually pushed this depth ceiling. But while we actually look at that, we need to understand like, okay, there has been a lot of different issues like, you look at the debt to GDP ratio during those times, and it's been increasing ever since the global financial crisis. And right now we are here. So any kind of drop at this rate in the economy is going to be painful. Then you come on to see like things like this is literally happening. Visa is building on an ERC network. And I'm like, okay, so one of these scalable networks in the world is going on top of a non-scalable network, I would say which doesn't actually look really great, does it? But one of the primary reason for that is SEC is running around spreading these papers everywhere. I'm gonna screw you, I'm gonna sue you, I'm gonna screw you. They're just sharing this thought process and right now they are after Filecoin, which doesn't really look good because they're now running after almost every different coin which they can see in the market and they're trying to get on with that. So now, for us, the primary question is like, okay, mm -hmm, that's the macro, that's something I understand. What are we really looking for the future? What does the short-term scenario show us? What's the macro scenario? What does the stock market show us? Because that's particularly important to understand if the stock market drops heavily, that creates panic. And some of these big cap stocks does show you like, okay, there is something here. You have a divergence, you may actually drop. Right. And while we look at XRP, I'm like, okay, I'm still fine if this scenario plays out. So we're going to detail through these one by one so that you get a better understanding before you actually jump into the market. Welcome to the Sinovic Investor Fam, where the normal retail guys get to learn how to become the next top 10 person of this world. Right now, Dollar is showing it is making a rising wedge. Now, rising wedge is bearish, fine. But this is a four-hour chart. We also get the divergence here. So if the dollar is about to drop, 
to test this range of 102. Now that would be a window when we actually see Bitcoin moving up. That makes sense. For me, that makes sense. You go up here while the dollar actually drops. That's positive, actually. And while that mess happens, XRP is like, okay, I just had a recent run up, but I'm cooling off. I'm going to come back down to test this support. Now, think about it like this. We broke higher. We now need to make sure those guys who push the price up is not just the news narrative guys who actually went in heavy looking at the news of Hinman speech, the documents there, but they are holding on for long term. That means you don't actually get more supply here while the price come back down. So if buyers need to buy more, they will have to fetch with a higher price. There is no supply at the bottom, right? So that's the supply demand equation on that scenario. But then on the front, we also see like macro resistance. You're flirting with that level and divergence forming with a short term pattern. So you have short term pattern, you have long term pattern, you have a divergence forming. And so that doesn't actually really look great because if the banks are dropping, panics are there. People would be like, OK, there is something wrong. And that kind of slows down the economy as a whole and stock market too. But then we come on to the Dow Jones and we are looking at this like, mm, right now we're not getting much of a divergence here. We are staying healthy in terms of the price and RSI. So maybe we are going to push through and create a trap. Usually we see that. Go back here in time, before we actually dropped in 2020, we stayed at that level for some time. After which you moved higher, maybe a couple of months, maybe three months, you actually run up. And then the market actually dropped, right? So that kind of trap can still enter here. And if that is coming, you should be aware of that. Because if we get a divergence, exit. If it's me, I would be doing that. In fact, I'm actually stocking a lot of different banking stocks, especially, right? So while you follow the market, make sure it's not only the short-term scenarios we are looking at. You also understand the macro narrative. Because Bitcoin, whether we like it or not, is showing you a macro reversal signal. What does that actually mean? Because if Bitcoin is about to go higher, coming back down to the support and then bouncing, there's going to be a lot more buying power entering into Bitcoin for sure. Now, take that into XRP, right? There's a macro chart of XRP. What can we really see here? The chart actually suggests that it is making a rounded bottom pattern, which ends up to be a cup and handle, which broke higher. Now we came back down to retest that, but not the exact retest level. We have some more space there, agreed. But you actually happen to see what's happening. This is the macro perspective, which means you're actually looking for a continuation pattern where the price goes boom, maybe to the all-time highs, breaking through that range to the new level. Now, you come on to the momentum-based chart, hey, Kanashi, and you're like, okay, we haven't yet started moving like, you know, that rocket, but we are looking like we're coming back to retest this level. See, this is actually interesting if you actually look at this carefully. Zoom in and see, last time while you had a double bottom, and then you broke above the moving average, say, now, yellow doesn't actually fit there, so we'll make it a little bit thicker. So here it is. While you break through that to the upside and hold on to that level, that's when your actual rally starts, right? That's when your actual rally starts, meaning the first leg which you actually saw here, that's nothing compared to the next leg which came after that. So right now, yes, we saw some move in XRP. We are happy about that. But if this plays out here, June, July, we are looking for something like this. Maybe we are going to go towards $2. That's going to be really great to observe, right? No one disagrees with that fact. But now you break that down slowly. You go on to a weekly chart. You still have a red candle at the end. On a Heikinashi, until it turns green, I would say like, ah, oh, we still have some bearish bias. But remember, 21-day moving average is an important thing in Heikinashi charts. If you're using Heikinashi analysis, you already understand that while you stay below 
that 21 day moving average, you're bearish. And as soon as you get a red, you're going in for reds. You're hunting reds, right? You get a red below the moving average, you drop. That's history. Now, what we want to see, however, is that our daily chart comes back above the 21 day moving average in green. So let's say XRP is gonna do that in next 10 days. We're gonna actually come above the 21 day moving average in green, great. What does that mean? Now, you also see the fact that, okay, we are here, we broke below, we retested that moving average once, got rejected. We are retesting that another time, we may get rejected, why? Because right now you don't actually see a divergence forming in the RSI. So like, I really love this fact that the RSI actually gives you this indication way before that happens. So, if you actually observe a short-term chart, yes, you got something, but at least on the long-term format, we didn't get that yet. So I would say, okay, once we get that, it's gonna be really bullish. So that can be the time when Bitcoin actually drops. Now, you go to a normal Japanese candlestick chart and ask yourself, if Bitcoin is going towards 27, 29, that range, say 28,500, and it drops from there, think about this clearly. It drops from there and XRP, instead of dropping from that 0.4 level, it's now dropping from that 0.46 level. So you're not mostly looking at the way lower edges like 0.35. You may end up 0.4 again or just close to that, which will be bullish, right? Um, we all understand the fact that, okay, something is changing mm -hmm, as the price is respecting this level as a new support. I would say the market is supporting that, right? If the price has to bounce from a level, that means someone in the market believe this is a support and they are taking in the buying positions. Or on the other side, those who are shorting the market, thinking it's gonna go down, they are slowing down. They're buying it back to give it back to take their spread in the shorting position, which kind of gives us the thought process like, okay, everyone, whether it's the sellers or the buyers, they agree on one point. What's it? It's a macro level of support. So they really want to see this level breaking unless you don't actually get a lot of shorting positions coming back into XRP as a market. Now, take XRP into Bitcoin because that actually gives you a little bit more perspective. Yes, you do look at XRP to dollar scenario, but it actually gives you a little bit more advantage to look at this. Last time we saw this breaking higher. Now, what we wanna see here is a continuation pattern. Now, as far as I'm concerned, the first leg up, we made that. We got that. Look at the RSI. It's actually forming a trend to the upside. And you come back down to test this range and bounce. That, again, for me, is a continuation pattern. You're literally doing this, right? You go up, come back down, you bounce back up, you come back down, you bounce back. This is what a bullish pattern look like. So if we are going to get that, it is again fair. And how low can we come? Not much, right? Not much. So if Bitcoin is going up, XRP should hold on. If Bitcoin is dropping, XRP should drop with it. That's how we are going to observe this fact, right? Now, the same on a macro, removing everything like this and going on the macro chart, we see like, okay, something just changed. You go on, look at the Hikinashi. It's like, okay, I'm just changing the direction. It has not yet confirmed that I'm changing the direction. But the benefit with Hikinashi is that it actually gives you the sense that it is about to change the direction. See, while you got two green weeks, next week showed you like, ah, I'm changing the direction. You went down. Now you observe the fact that the exact opposite is happening. You did drop red candles, after which you're getting a direction change, which means most likely you're gonna see green candles coming in. So that's XRP against Bitcoin. So if XRP against Bitcoin clearly shows you the fact that there has been a pattern in the market, the market kind of obeyed that, and now something is changing, that means yes, agreed, that's an impulsive move to the downside. So usually you end up getting a corrective move, which can look like this. Now, if that corrective wave is going any way close to this range, that means XRP is close to a dollar in 
XRP USD terms. Now, take that same thought process to extend it further. If you observe the fact that XRP is coming close to a dollar, what exactly is the price doing? You have major resistance here, right? The previous support turning into resistance. If you break this level, I definitely believe that majority, majority of those who are bearish right now will have to change the thought process. The big guys who actually believe we are going to like 0.2 or below, they will be forced by the market to think differently. Because while you actually go through a lot of different books, say, there's a quote from Howard Marks where he actually suggests like, bull market has three phases, bear market has three phases. Same. Bull market, the first phase, only a few recognize that the market is not going to go down forever. There is going to be a change in direction. So you actually see this, right? Clearly, you dropped heavily. Then you dropped again. Then you drop massively. So I think like that's like the three phase of the bear market where you actually came down. So the wave one correction is completed. That looks really good. And you need to see this breaking higher. The difference, however, is that yes, on a macro, you kind of feel like, okay, the direction is like this. And right now you observe there is a possibility that we are inside this channel, which means the price can actually do another leg to the downside like this, right? That's the general thought process there. So I'm like, okay, how does the correction look like in any market cycle, any assets? We actually see a ABC pattern, right? And inside that ABC pattern, we're able to notice like in the first leg down, we get this five move to the downside, A, B, C, D, E. After which you actually get the opposite, the corrective action to the upside. That would actually look like an ABC. So here for better understanding, we'll change the color and we'll change the size of it. Say it looks something like this. Great. Now, again, the next leg would look like this. It is common, it is easy to see that. Now, take the entire thought process here and go into the price action. What do you actually see? Do you recognize the fact that, now, if you wanna see the ABC, you can see that on the weekly, but if you wanna see the ABCDE, now you have to break it down. So you go down here, A, the B, the C, the D, the E. So you got something great, it looks good. After which, what do we wanna see? We want to actually see the market going against that ABC on the corrective direction. And we just saw that the market did exactly that. Fine. After that, we are noticing the fact that the market did drop. Now, you measure that drop in the market and you actually happen to see like, okay, the market actually turns like this. It actually does this crazy stuff. Now, what happens after that crazy stuff, right? Now, the market actually shows it does all these things. Here, it failed to even go a little bit higher than this A leg, which showed the bearishness is actually increasing. Great. Now, while we go back and analyze this, we are learning, right? And the way we learn is that we are going to implement that in the future so we don't actually get kicked out from the market like last time. The market is super volatile. So we learn from the market. And if the market actually shows you like, okay, I've completed this stuff. Now, what exactly should the market follow? It should actually do this. Great, it completed that, agreed. But just after that, what were you doing all this time? The structure, the pattern, the wave, whatever you call it, what was happening in the market? It was actually showing you the fact that I'm going down in an impulsive wave. So let me look at that. This is what you see. This is what you see. And I'm like, okay, that looks weird. You kind of changed the direction. Or at least the momentum was not present in that move to the upside. Now you happen to see like, okay, this leg is actually completed. Here your A, B, C is done. Even after that, <clears throat> instead of the market going down, you actually saw that creepy movement inside here. The one, the two, the three, the four, dropping in and then taking off. So your bear market rally 
just changed into a bull market in my opinion that's why breaking this down is important now yes 100 percentage you know we actually go through a lot of these assets we say don't chase the green candles make sure you are on an asset which is working on the actual reversal pattern which is on the macro buy zone which does give you the real idea like if you are on an asset you want to actually make sure you understand the fundamentals you look for everything about that asset the macro the market fully because once you understand that now we are able to get benefit of that say while we were going through this now it takes time right to understand okay the, this is the macro scenario but this can be the micro scenario inside that yes we are going higher through the roof but we'll have a correction first so i'm observing like some people in the comment section say like that's a bearish bias i'm like no that's a bullish thing you're waiting to buy this asset if you are really wanting to buy this asset at the support not at the resistance that's what i'm trying to give you guys here right not saying like sell it here and run away that is not the thought process i'm sharing if you are looking at the market to take the best educated guess then you are trying to take everything in and make that best decision if another guy is saying we're going to drop towards point two great you listen to that now you want to compare it with what they used to back it if it's the wave structure, if it's the Wyckoff pattern, if it's the market cycle, if it's the psychology, whatever it is, you compare, okay, this guy, the guy A said we are going down to point two. The guy B is saying, I'm going to go up. The price is looking positive. Now, you as a neutral guy, because your money is your money, that A or B is not losing money. Now, your choice is that, okay, I want to make a best, better decision. Is the justification given by the guy A and the guy B while you compare in between, which does weigh in, which actually goes through the historical books? Because if you are literally going through a ton of books, I'm actually reading through a ton of books right now to understand. Okay, right now I'm shut. Now one of the reason for that, say some of these like uh, the one up on the Wall Street, is mainly because I'm charting stock market right now in India right, the banks, and I really want to actually look at their earnings, their EPS, their, the way they report, because the way you report in the financial statements, you can manipulate that, so I really want to know, like, if I am the guy who is preparing that financial statement for the company, I have incentives to make it look positive, right, so as an outsider, I want to know, like, how can they make it positive, and I'm seeing a lot of different interesting things, that's one of the reasons why, you know, I selected a couple of banks in India and went short on them. Now, news, narrative, everything matters. But the market psychology and all these calculations, like, you can actually use a Sharpie ratio if you want to. You can just use a cash ratio to see whether they are going to be in trouble in terms of higher interest rates, right? You go through all this. So, certainly, you literally have to sit there and ask, okay, this section, does it really feel justifiable or reasonable for you? If so, make sure you take the right decision. So guys, if you receive value for your time, please do hit that like and subscribe button. I'll meet you guys on the next video. Bye for now.